Hasnov for the most part is a pretty garbage website, isn't it? They're most they're all kind of garbage. Even hype beast has his garbage moments. But these hype beasts are just they just they just report anything and everything. The the kind of maybe the quality control isn't the best. They just report anything and everything, right? If kind of if kind of takes a shit, they'll talk about it, right? But high high about is even worse because they try and do those like complexy Buzzfeedy articles, like ten things you need to make sure you get the sneakerhead girl of your dreams. Like fuck off. So it's usually annoying and then the op-eds the kind of article pieces they 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 write um with some of their writers are even worse so this one is titled please let 2019 be the last year of pointless collaborations which is like you know high snob talking about pointless collaborations like high snob you are pointless what the fuck are you talking about like it just doesn't make any sense right streetwear's streetwear is bought on the bedrock of collaboration that's where it's kind of formed from right the idea that you can take uh, a Haynes beefy tee and screen print your own logo and it in this in essence is a collaboration the fact that your friend who also prints t-shirts and you and your dusty bmx gang can come together make a t-shirt uh, put a party on together book a bunch of djs and 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 design a whole activation behind it is what streetwear is built upon like pointless collaborations in the in the lexicon of high, high snobiety will never end because that's what streetwear is built upon and the moment we lose pointless collaboration is the moment we lose the whole essence of streetwear it doesn't make any sort of sense what do they want they want it to be elevated to the kind of heady heights of fashion no it's it's a it's, a, it's garbage fashion collaborations only happen after the fact right 10 years after dr martin's is cool fashion starts jumping on dr martin's but when Dr. Martens wasn't cool and wasn't in the cultural zeitgeist, like they don't jump on it. They try and make their own fucking dusty versions of high-end Dr. Martens and no one buys them. Whereas streetwear brands, they, they are direct to consumer and they're of the moment. Whatever's popping right now, we do the collaboration. We launch it right now. Come on, man. Like, pointless collaborations. Anyway, I, I've only read the title. I haven't actually read the article. I don't know if or not I'm actually off base and they're arguing on a completely different point. But, um, oh, and guess who wrote the article? Guess who wrote the fucking article? Guess who wrote the article that I didn't like? Huh? Guess who wrote it? Eugene Rabkin from fucking Star Zack, guys. That fucking numpty. Of course it was him. Of course. Hating articles. Let's get it. And of course, they use the worst example. Human Made in KFC, which is not maybe the worst. I think maybe it's quite an actual clever collaboration overall. But here we go. Let's let's read what Eugene Rabkin has to say about points collaboration because I'm sure it's going to be super constructive and very, very positive. Um... I'm, and I'm not I'm not a positive kind of dude. I don't want any, everything to be positive. I need to be positive all the time. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, sometimes he does go out of his way to just not like everything that's around him. It's like, what do you want? You Like, it's never going to change. It's not going to change. It's going to continue. Like, the people that he doesn't like, they're going to get older. Their, their taste levels are going to get more refined. They're going to get different jobs, but they're going to still make shit. So he has to what? He's, he's, he's going to have to wait for a whole new generation of people to come around again for him to suddenly fall back in love with fashion. It's like, come on, man. Jog on. Anyway, let me, let me read the article just in case I'm, I'm reading it all wrong. Uh, so this article is titled, point, let's, Please Let 2008 Be the Last Year of Points Collaborations on High Snobiety. And it starts off saying, if you read this publication, chances are you own something from a collab, a, a shorthand term for a collaboration between two brands. The fact that there is a term called co collab already speaks to the significance and omnipresence of collaborations. It seems like there are now at least several collaborations announced every week. Supreme North Face, Polo's Palace, Virgil, Everyone and Their Mother. Again, what? Like, just, just to be snarky for the sake of it. Why does he have to be such a dick? That's why I don't understand. Like, those kind of... Why does he have to be such a dick? Supreme North Face is probably the worst example to shoot from because that is quintessentially uh, the most perfect collaboration you're ever going to see, right? Um, a North Face, a jacket that's been co-opted by uh, New York heads from, you know, from yesteryear to graffiti to skateboarding. It's, kind of, it's been an omnipresent brand. Supreme, one of the most loaded streetwear brands of modern times, right? They want to make a, a jacket of, of North Face level quality, but they can't at this current moment, current moment of time. So what better way to do it than to make a collaboration with North Face. That's how, they, that's how the collaboration came about. Polo Ralph Lauren and Palace. Makes sense as well. Even though I don't give a fuck about Palace, it makes complete sense why they'll collaborate with Ralph Lauren. It is kind of right in line with their kind of, you know, um, what do you call it? Luxury chav look, right? It kind of lends itself very well in it. And Virgil Abloh as a, as a creative, collaborating with everyone under the sun, that's what he's meant to be doing. He's all around creative. Person, that's what you do. You don't just wait around for the perfect collaboration to land in your lap. You collaborate with Ramoa because you do travel quite often. And if you do a collaboration with, with some luggage, you might sell out some luggage, which is fucking weird, right? People selling out luggage isn't a, a standard thing that happens. You collaborate with Evion because, yes, you just can do it. Like, I don't, I don't know. This guy, man. Hey, let's continue. 
There's nothing wrong with collabs per se. Oh, really? I wouldn't get get that looking from what you read, right? What you read there. A good collab can lead to a fresh take on a f tried and true product, take a product out of its comfort zone and create something generally new. It can give a designer a chance to bring home to perspective to another industry or provide access to materials and means production he or she otherwise wouldn't have, which is what Supreme North Face do, which is what most collaborations are all about, right? And also, it's a, it's a way to just put on your friends, man. It's cool. Of course, collaborators have become a vital source of brand image and publicity. Even collaborators don't provide a major revenue source. They bring brand awareness and keep the marketing, publicity, media treadmill going. Uh, not all of us may like it, but such is the consequence of our fast-paced consumerist world. Cool, whatever, right? Uh, many collaborations make sense for reasons outlined above. When, for example, Jonathan Tomby brings his brilliant uh, deconstruction skills to Louis Vuitton, sorry, to Levi's product or uh, Chitose Abbey of Sakai to that North Face or Craig Green and Kai and whatever that name is to Montclair, something worthwhile is born. When neighborhood collaborates with Dr. Myers, his bike ethos can closely be aligned to Doc's. Uh, there are collaborations that are cringeworthy in their prophetic attempt to chase the millennial customer. But as the number of collaborations in the past couple of years have grown exponentially, they have become more and more indiscriminate, sometimes downright absurd and inevitable consequence when the brand begins to run out of options. It's not really a case of running out of options. It's the fact that they are absurd by their very nature, right? Collaborations. Sometimes collaborations work because, you know, there is a mutual uh, mutual love and appreciation between the two brands coming together, or the two kind of creative enterprises, two design studios, whatever it may be. But most of the time, they are quite absurd. You are testing the waters, right? You are kind of hoping that there's going to be some sort of overlap or you're going to be able to introduce your customers from one end to the other end, right? When Moleskin collaborates with, uh, name your streetwear brand, right? What's to say a Moleskin fan won't think a collaborating with Supreme is a bit cringeworthy? Doesn't have any sort of uh, correlation with Moleskin. It's a completely different segment of the population. But the hope is with Moleskin that they're going to have a product that's going to be a little a luxury product. If they do one, with, imagine with Hermes, right? They're hoping that they're going to be able to introduce the Moleskin uh, customer to Hermes. They're hoping the Hermes customer will use to Moleskin, and they're hoping overall they'll be able to elevate their brand to a level of Moleskin or near above. Like they're hoping that's what you're kind of allying yourself with those brands. So by their very nature, they're going to be absurd. That's just how it is. You just have to kind of like, you know, it's it's a uh, what would you say? It's trial by error for the most part, right? Those be the king is Virgil, who I'm sure he hates, not because he's black, but because, you know, he just doesn't agree with the work. I'm sure it's not because he's black. I'm sure. I'm sure it's not. Uh, those be the king of Virgil, whose greatest achievement is to slap question marks on everything that he can get his hands on. And these days he gets his hands on everything from my kid Virgil to Moet Champagne. This is pouring with hate, isn't it? It's just pouring with hate. Again, you cannot like what he does. You cannot like him as a person. But you cannot deny. You cannot deny the guy's output, man. You cannot deny his output. He's earned the right to talk his shit. He's earned the right. Over these last, I don't know, 10 or so years, the amount of things he's put his name to, the amount of stuff that's uh, elevated his position. Because usually what happens, right? You get big. You get given collaborations. They sell out. And then you start to kind of die down a bit. Your, your star starts to dim. People stop to kind of associate themselves with you because... Even though you're hyped, people the consumer doesn't like your things anymore. They don't buy it. It's not selling out, right? That's the kind of the metrics they use, right? It's not getting retweeted as many times as it should be. It's not getting liked. It's not getting shared. It's not getting posted on all the blogs. It's not selling out online. The brands will. The brands are not. They're not. Uh, they're not loyal to you, right? They're only loyal to the the amount of clicks and reach you can an engagement you can kind of garner, and it goes to show that outside of the bubble of the kind of uh, scene critics, right. The general consumer loves what he does. The general consumer is infatuated with the amount of traveling he does. The general consumer cares a lot about the fucking silly things he writes in his notebook. The, the general consumer loves his hyperbole when he's standing up on there giving lectures. They love it. They're lapping it up because he, and you know why I know that? Because he keeps getting booked. Because he keeps getting collaborations. He keeps getting given chances. He keeps getting opportunities and he keeps elevating his station. There was, there was a time when he was DJing in fucking really cheesy Las Vegas clubs and just kind of get into the bag. Now he's now he's fucking DJing alongside DJ Harvey in Japan. He's obviously getting better at what he's doing. People are obviously thinking, you know what? Hyper Sai, this guy is good. He's good for everyone. He's good because he's good at what he does. He's good because he brings eyes and, and, I don't know, and bodies to this arena. So to kind of dispute that is folly, really. It just shows that you're hating because, again, take away your bias. Take away you don't like him as a person and he chats shit. He's not talented. He's not a designer. Okay, I get it. But just look at the output. Look at the output and look at the chances he's being given. You don't get given the chances he gets without being good at what you do. That's something everyone has to realize. You don't get that opportunity and you don't consistently hit out of the park too. You know what I mean? 
all the time. Bang, bang, bang. Smash it out of the park if you're not good at what you do. But again, if you're Eugene Rebke from Style Zeitgeist, you hate everything that's around nowadays because the people don't look like you, right? They don't, they don't wear the stuff that you wear, they don't listen to the music that you listen to, and you hate it. And they're at the forefront. They're leading the charge, right? Raph Simmons re recently uh, got uh, left uh, Calvin Klein or got fired regardless of what you believe or the rumours on the scene. But, you know, look at the difference. He was somebody that was kind of sniping at Virgil, saying that, you know, he hates his work and he doesn't want to be compared to him and he's leaps and bounds above it. Okay, cool. No worries. But what's going on? Nowadays, what's happening now? Do you know what I mean? It's like, these guys, man, I don't know. I... I, I I would I, I would like to think if I was in that position, I would be welcoming. Like I'd be like a John Galliano. He's got an amazing podcast um with uh based off my based on Margella recently that I think tied in with the uh, recent shows where he kind of uh talks about his creative process. It's fucking mesmerizing. I'll try and get, if I try and find a link, I'll try and find a link and post it on the show description. But an interview with uh John Galliano talking about his uh you know, his kind of uh, rebirth at Mesa Marsh and Margella. And he was talking about the kind of current climate nowadays, right? In fashion shows, on the runway shows. Talking about, you know, Virgil debuting at Paris, uh, Ricardo Tisci at, at Burberry, uh, Kim Jones at Dior, right? New energy coming in, people moving houses, like everyone coming to Paris, right? Everyone stepping up their game. And he kind of said that it's adding, it's kind of adding more fuel to his creative energies, right? He kind of feels inspired again because of all these guys are around. He kind of wants to show, he said what he wants to do. He can't do what they do. He can't do the street stuff. He's going to just concentrate on tailoring. He didn't say tailoring's back as like a weird little kind of dog whistle in terms of trying to get out, get the streetwear out of, out of the scene, right? To kind of dis, you know, dismiss the streetwear because it's not something that you like. He didn't say that. He said they can do the streetwear stuff. They can ace that, but I can do this fashion shit really well. And he's rising to the challenge. The last couple of collections for Mason March and Margiela from the fucking diffusion lines and stuff that you see on the runway is insanely good. Why is it? Because John Gardner re recognized the competition on the scene and he rose up to it. Instead of complaining, he didn't complain like this Ruji Rebkin does and bemoan it. It's not how it used to be. He saw what's happening out there. He, you know, and he kind of raised his game because of it. <laughs> Anyway, it continues. Uh, but even brands are holding high regard, like Japan's neighborhood. Of course, you hold your uh, neighborhood. In, again, what? Because it's Japanese. You could argue, has neighborhood done anything new in the last five or so years? Have they done anything new? Has WTF done anything new? No. But you like it. Why? Because they've been around longer and they're Japanese. Like, often produce uh, eyebrow raising collabs. What is the point of neighborhood in Adidas? Well, what is the point of na neighborhood in Billionaire Boys Club? What's the point of neighborhood in J Crew? Yes, you read right, J Crew. I tried to imagine the client uh, for the latter, a low-level marketing executive who rides a Harley on Sundays, a high angel in touch with his inner <laughs> gentrifier. Like Jesus Christ, man, this guy hates everything. It's so funny to see. He probably knows. It. Um, and what to make of the collaboration between the Hundreds and Andrew Lloyd Webber of Broadway Music fame? In the May 2018 post on their Facebook page, 100 posted their full and bombastic statement. Streetwear without culture is just fashion. Right? But is the musical cats, is the musical cats, uh, in, in, but if the musical cats is the kind of culture you are aligning yourself with, you are turning streetwear into fashion with a level of gusto that would make Walt Disney agree with envy. The larger point here is the same one that goes for the entire world of fashion. Streetwear is included. The loss of any culture meaning that hap, uh, uh, cultural meaning that happens when context is removed until everything becomes more severe. What is that? Let's go again. The loss of any culture meaning the loss of the loss of any cultural meaning that happens when context is removed until everything becomes mere surface. It is the point of contention exactly when colors begin to consume the world, but there is somewhat of a consensus that the point of departure was with the first HM collaboration, the one with Carl in 2004. He's geez, he's still complaining about this. God almighty. The publicity hurricane is unleashed with long lines of harried customers descending on H&M flagship in a downright feeding frenzy trying to get a piece of that highly questionable call was a very eye, was an eye opener for everyone in the fashion world. Yeah, it was eye opener because they kept repeating that formula, man. It made them a lot of money. And it also exposed a whole group of people to Karl Lagerfeld. Uh, products that they probably weren't able to expose to. And the hope is that you buy into H&M and then you suddenly work your way up the food chain. That's the hope. It probably doesn't happen because if you're going to buy H&M car logo, you're probably just going to stay with that anyway. But the hope is that it's like a, it's like a sales funnel, right? They want to get you at the top of the funnel and then kind of slowly but surely pass you down. That's the hope. H&M went collaborative, um, 
went on to collaborate with everyone from Barmaid to Comme des Garçons. Still one of my favorite collaborations ever. Like that Haitian collaboration was so good. Uh, still some stuff that I really wanted to do in it. Ray Kyle Kuba, Leo expressed regret at having done it. I'm sure I'm sure she regrets it enough to, to give back the money that she got paid for it. You think so? I don't think so. Um, to most recently, Machino. Other match chains that Target got into the game as well, as did Sportswear Giants. The story here was clear. Democratization of fashion, mass stage exclusivity. Uh, ostensibly, but not so really, as all these collaborations were produced in limited numbers and even... No, but it doesn't... Shut up, Eugene. They are trying... There is democratization, right? There are more H&M stores out there, right? Then there are Balmain or Comme des Garçons stores. There are, it just is. And there's more quantity of items that they sell between the with all those put together. I'd, I'd even I'd even I'd even garner that one fucking H and M store probably stocks more items in their store has probably more SKUs than any than all Barmain stores combined. Right? It just is what it is, right? Because most runway items don't even make it to the fucking store in the most for the most case. Right? If they don't get bought by the buyers in the showroom, they don't make it. So they are democratizing fashion because they're allowing everyone to buy into Barmain. And the hope is, it's a hope, it's a fucking naive hope, but the hope is you buy into H&M and Barmain and then over a period of time, you will then start thinking, you know what, maybe I should back up Barmain mainline. Maybe I should get a bit of that. And you kind of work your way up. That's the hope of it. That's the hope. Anyway, the article continues, you know, he's talking his nonsense, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It just surprises me that someone could be this, like, I don't know, this, this, um, this, no, we say, um, we say disattached. I guess maybe he's, he, he's intentionally, you know, not aware of what the client, current climate is of fashion or what it means to sell commercial products and stuff. He wants to kind of be in the, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'll link the article in the show and you can check it out yourself. But it's called Please Let 2019 Be the Last Year of Points Collaboration. Eugene Rapp keeps hating on everything once again. It's interesting. I like it because it makes me, it fires me up and gets me speaking about things passionately and defending everything. Because I think it's amazing. I think now that we live in the best, best possible time, man. Like the gatekeepers are finally gone. Eugene Rapkin can't. You don't. You don't need to get Eugene to post something for you on social or on a website on an online magazine anymore. You can just upload it yourself. You don't need a gatekeeper. You don't need him to validate what you're doing anymore. And I think that really wrangles really deeply with people like him, with, with a person like an Ebro, a Hot 97, all those kind of dudes, right? That kind of person, right? That kind of temperament. They're bemoaning the 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 yesteryears when the the creatives that were coming up were going to them for guidance were kind of seeking approval right were asking hey what do you, what do you think of this track man? hey what do you think of this collection do you think i should put what do you think of how, how i put this lapel on this jacket they were asking for it but now they don't need it anymore they just go directly to their customers and ask them hey we're making a new jacket do you want a hood on it or not vote on instagram or whatever you want to do they can read the comments they can respond to emails like they don't need they don't need that communication with the with the chris anymore because they can just couldn't communicate to people that are actually supporting what they do they're flipping customers the fans of their work the fans of them as a person they don't need them anymore so i think that is what kind of really grates these kind of people in their head like oh i'm not a gatekeeper anymore people don't need my people don't need my approval how now can i reinvent myself and now he's reinvented himself kind of being some i don't know some fucking bootleg kathy horn and he's now complaining about issues in the streetwear and fashion. Let's just sh- shut the fuck up. Points collaboration. That's what. That's the whole point of of streetwear. If you don't like the collaboration, you just pass. You just keep keep it moving. The bape and fucking puma thing that they put out recently that is fucking garbage. I just keep it moving. It's not for me. I just keep it moving. Bape has died ever since Nigo left. I keep it moving. I don't complain and say, oh, uh, why are people still buying bape now? It's fucking shit. There's still pieces in it that are still good. If they like it, they like it. I keep it moving. There's loads of brands out there. I keep it moving. I keep it moving. There's so many brands to choose from. Keep it moving. What is he going to do? Sit there in his fucking Boris, whatever that name is, and Rick Owens trousers, uh, hoping that the climate changes and he can suddenly step out and become cool again. You're cool anywhere as you are, man. You don't need to like wait for the right, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, hue of person to come around that you agree with. Dog whistles, man. Absolute dog whistles. They're, they're annoyed that the hip-hop guys, all the, all the flipping black guys have come in and fucking taken over. That's what they're annoyed about, right? They they were firstly annoyed that all these all these vapid, um, in their in their eyes, right? S- social media influencers took over, right? Um, no one was taking pictures of editors anymore. Everyone's taking pictures of like the people that are wearing the clothes, buying it from the shop, right? So that kind of wrangled them because the the girls that are wearing it didn't necessarily know the history of the brand and all this sort of malarkey. That pissed them off. So the intellectuals kind of got dashed, and now the kind of like cultural and scene and kind of critics and you know, the writers, they're also getting dashed because no one cares. People just keep buying the stuff that they hate, that they're writing about, and they don't get it. They don't understand. But again, the market is the market. If people like your shit and what you're doing is good, it will show. 
How many how many things do you have available? You printed 30 t-shirts. You, how many have you sold? Oh, I've sold one. Okay, that means no one wants what you're making. Or you haven't found the best way to kind of, you know, uh, distribute your stuff. You don't really get it in front of the right people. But overall, the market is a market. If what you're selling is good, people will buy it. Simple. And the fact that this Eugene guy is now having to resort. Imagine what, imagine how he feels, how the ego must feel having to write for Hype Society. Considering the amount of trash they put out on their website. He's now writing articles about bemoaning the state of flipping collaborations. We don't care what you think anywhere about streetwear. What, why, what, what do we care? You're, high, you're avant-garde fashion, dude. You wear black. Stay in the lane over there. We don't care. Don't come to our world. We don't want to hear your opinion. We don't. Sorry. We don't want to hear your opinion. When he keeps championing it, imagine. You could argue that the people that he likes are just fucking disciples of fucking Rick Owens, right? You could, you know, you could probably swap out the logos. You couldn't tell what was Rick Owens' piece. They're just flipping copying everything that Rick Owens does. What unique voices are coming out from that world, for the most part, apart, apart from Soloist? What's the, what's the real unique voices coming out from that world, apart from Undercover? What's really unique that's coming out from that side of Stars Out, guys? Nothing, man. It's all fucking copycats of Rick Owens. And then here he comes, coming in the streetwear, telling us what, what is cool and why we should not do collaborations. Jog on. Jog on, man. Jog on.